Okay, so before we start talking about market failures, it's important to go back to what we had talked about in a couple sessions at the beginning of the class about what a market actually is. If we want to know what it's like, how it's failing, we want to know what it is that's failing. Um, so if you remember from session two, we talked about markets as an institution that is used for organizing society. Um, in, in the previous session, we talked all about institutions and how they shape our behavior. Um, how they emerge from interactions with other people, how they can be seen as game theory. Um, markets are also one of the institutions in society and they help um, coordinate behavior um, and coordinate action between people. Um, a market specifically allows uh, people to connect so that they can exchange goods and services through buying and selling or through negotiating. Um, that's the specific market um, institution that we have here. Um, it allows people to coordinate behavior um, in a way that lets them expand their production pos possibility frontier. They can create more stuff. They can buy more stuff by trading and specializing. Um, this is um, back in session two. We talked about comparative and absolute advantage, where if you have comparative advantage, you can gain from trade, even if you don't have absolute advantage in things. Um, and that is because of market institutions that enable that, that those kind of gains in society. Um, the whole... The, the whole foundation for markets working, though, is prices. And we talked about this in session two as well, that when markets work well, the prices that you see um, send messages about the scarcity of goods and services that exist in society. And so the prices themselves are what coordinate activity and, and behavior among complete strangers and among people who don't know anything. Um, so the example that I gave back then was um, when I go shopping and I see that strawberries are on sale um, or strawberries are cheap, then I will buy them. I don't have to know about strawberry growing season. I don't have to look up when blueberry season is or when raspberry season is. I don't have to follow um, the details from farmers about how well the strawberry crop is going. I just show up to the store. If the prices are low, I buy them. That's enough of a signal for me to know that it is strawberry season and I should engage in market activity. Um, and so prices are the signal. And if prices are working well, then you'll buy the right amount of stuff. If prices are low, you'll buy more. If prices are high, you'll buy less. Um, and so as long as those prices are working, then the market will hum along and institution, the institution itself will work and you'll have all sorts of coordinated behavior. Invisible hand will do its thing and everybody's happy. But often the prices don't include the effects of individual actions, um, where if I decide to do something um, as a firm or as an individual person or as a government, that can actually distort the prices. And once that happens, then it's no longer a good signal of scarcity and there can be over-purchasing or under-purchasing or under-provision or over-provision, and it can mess up um, the relationship between the quantity of stuff and the price of that stuff. Um, there are a whole bunch of specific types of market failures. Um, we're, in this class, we've talked about some of these already. Um, a few sessions ago, we talked about monopolies, where if you are a firm and you're a monopoly, your incentive, based on how supply and demand cross, is that you will underproduce the amount of stuff that society wants and you'll overcharge for it. So things will be too expensive. You'll create less stuff and you'll charge a lot more for it. That's great for you as a firm. You'll get all sorts of profits, but that's not great for society as a whole. And so in monopoly situations, the prices that you see out in the world don't actually reflect scarcity. It just reflects you paying a company more and, and, and improving their profits. Um, and so that's a good example of a market failure. We've also talked about asymmetric information. Um, where if you have moral hazard um, or adverse selection, if you have hidden knowledge or hidden action, um, that can mess up the prices. If you buy an insurance policy um, for a low price and don't tell them that you're about to go sky, skydiving the next day, um, the price for that insurance policy no longer matches up with your personal actions and that's bad for the insurance company. Great for you. Um, and so when you have that mismatch of um, your own actions or a firm's actions or a government's actions and the prices, that creates a market failure. Um, these two here, public goods and externalities, that's what we're going to be focusing on today um, and how, how these two situations represent 
situations where prices don't reflect individual actions um, and how they can cause markets to failure, where there will be an under provision of, of products or of goods or of services, and it can be bad for society. So let's talk about public goods.